digs and rips. <laughs> this thing in a Baja situation would be incredible. So that was pretty good on the drift angle, I hope. Today, it's time for the Hummer EV to take on our hill climb challenge. I'm so pumped. This is the thousand horsepower super truck that weighs 9,000 pounds, has three electric motors, and is just absolutely insane in all of the best ways. What we're gonna do is run it through our hardest hill climb challenge that we have here in Northern Colorado. We've run a lot of its competitors. We actually just had the Rivian R1T coming up the hill so I'm really curious to see how this thing does in comparison so let's go check out how the motors work you know in terms of virtual locking differentials it's a topic we've brought up many times see how it works on the Hummer compared to others we're then going to take a look to see how it does coming up the hill and then it's uh, approach departure and breakover angle on our big sort of undulation obstacle so time for the Hummer EV to take on the hill climb challenge. Let's do it right here on out of spec overlanding. This is the $110,000 Hummer EV uh, pickup truck. They'll also have an SUV version coming down the road. Looking forward to testing that. Um, if you're curious about other reviews, charging range tests, you know, driving dynamics impressions, those will be on our out of spec reviews channel. But of course the off-road stuff lives here. Let's talk about this thing because there's a lot to get into, but I'm going to make it super quick because I want to do a quick hit video. Also, the sun's about to go down, so we have <laughs> such a short amount of time. This is why, even though we have this thing for almost two weeks, we're just pounding out the videos. Let me take you on a tour. Hummer EV Edition 1 only comes in one specification, just like this one right here. Uh, white with the same moon-themed interior. If you come around the side over here, you'll see we're on 35-inch uh, Wrangler tires, Goodyear Wranglers, of course, and they are the Territory MT tire. Now, it's an OE-specific tire. Yep, and it's got like a strengthened sidewall. We always run this test at factory pressures, but I do see the argument for why we should air down for this test, but every vehicle would be a little different. Um, so if for whatever reason it can't complete it and we think it's down to grip, I'll air down the tires. It's better for everything if you air down, of course, always recommend airing down for off-road, but for this test, we don't. We have a 212 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. I've heard quotes from 226 to 246 kilowatt hour gross capacity, uh, but huge honking battery in this thing. And it's just awesome. Three motors in this particular one, all permanent magnet, which should really help with the low speed grunt. I've actually had Hummer EV off-roading, but it was more like a little driveway that was dirt on the first drive thing that GM put together for this. I'm glad they did show its off-road capabilities. It has crab walk because it has rear wheel steering. Few different modes for rear wheel steering. There's three, there's normal, there's off-road, and there's terrain. Each mode increasing the amount of rear wheel steering you get for the amount of steering input. I think the maximum is 1.3 degrees to one in terrain mode. If you're curious about the exact degree differences in my first drive review of this, I actually walk you through when I do the crab walk section, what each mode does and how many degrees you get for steering input. It's incredible. I have to tell you, driving this thing around, I've put about six, 700 miles on it, something like that. It's a beast. I love this truck. It is just one of the coolest things on sale. It definitely represents excess, but the price, 110 grand for this one right here, not bad for all the batteries, the motors, the thousand horsepower is really good. So um, suspension, we have uh, no disconnecting sway bars here, but there is an extract mode. I haven't been able to get this truck into extract mode. Every time I try, it says extract mode unavailable. We're going to try and get in it today, of course, because I think it would be good to do it once we're up in the boulders, but we'll try it. That should just go crazy high on the suspension. I think they had to fine tune extract mode a little bit because when I first drove the truck, it just wasn't available. It was software locked out. It's now showing in this one and it allows me to select it but it hasn't gone in. So we have entry exit height, normal, high, and then we can run extract on top of that if it'll go into it. If not, we're gonna run high suspension. For the hill climb itself, we're gonna run the terrain mode setting. That's gonna prioritize um, the drivetrain, basically having the most amount of throttle tip in, the smoothness on the throttle, I should say, over bumps is gonna be tuned nice and easy. Um, it's gonna allow you know, a whole bunch of cooling stuff. Actually, I've kicked it in. It changes almost all of the electronic parameters. Again, that rear wheel steering. What's interesting is the two rear motors on the rear axle 
two permanent magnet motors. I believe they're 255 kilowatts each. Um, they basically work independent of each other. So there's a rear locker. It's a virtual locker that tries to target left and right wheel speed to match. One of the problems we've had with Rivian out here, especially right here on this challenge where the Hummer's parked, is it's spinning one wheel and then the other one basically just not getting enough power to move it. So we're, I'm actually gonna do the same test where I try and load two wheels up and see if I can get up the thing. On the front axle, there's a mechanical locking differential, which is really great to see. And so that means front wheels will be physically locked together with a locker. That's magic. That's what we need. Old school lockers, baby. It's all I've been asking for in my Rivian. I'm really glad we have it. One thing this is, is a lot bigger and a lot heavier than the Rivian R1T that we just ran up. We're first of all on 35 inch all terrains. Rivian gets 34 inch all terrains. Um, my truck doesn't have them, but that's the maximum you can get. You can actually run up to 37s on the Hummer EV without any modifications. Really cool. So I bet you could probably just spec whatever tires on the uh, Raptor 37 and throw it on this. I don't know if it's weight rated, but that would be an interesting one. Curious to see what the Hummer EV crowd does with tires. Underneath, fully skid plated, fully protected, at least according to GM. You can do whatever you want with this thing. This one also came with a spare tire in the bed. Didn't bring it because I'm an idiot and we were running out of daylight. So we jumped in the truck, came up here to shoot this video. Um, so what do you say we do a couple things? Let's go drift it around first in a parking lot, be an idiot. Then we're gonna try the off camber test, see if the drivetrain can pull us up this section right here. Again, I don't wanna let the tire spin too long because heavy truck, we wanna be kind to our environment, always tread lightly. And then we're gonna run it up the hill which I really think it shouldn't have any problem doing, but you never know. We thought the same with the R1S and that one struggled. So um, yeah, let's go have some fun with the Hummer EV off-road. This is like what this thing was built for. If it wasn't 32 degrees outside, I'd remove the roof and we'd be full convertible mode. It would just be incredible. So there's no lockers on. We are in off-road mode right now. And Kyle's gonna see if he can climb up here. Oh, we'll spin. So from what I can feel is the back right and the front left are spinning. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is engage the rear locker now and see if it can electronically match the wheel speed. Rear locker engaged. So right now what I have selected is the rear virtual locker. And after that initial acceleration, I can tell this back left wheel isn't spinning and that back right wheel is. So this has kind of been my issue with a lot of these virtual lockers. We've uh, mostly with Rivian, cause that's what I have the most experience with is that they don't lock the axles. So I'm gonna accelerate here. You can stand behind the truck, not too close, but definitely so you can see both rear wheels and see what I'm talking about. So my impression is, you know, we can really feel that one wheel spinning and the other one not getting enough power, not simulating a locking dip. What I'm actually gonna do is give it more throttle now. It's a little bit abusive to the ground, but I wanna see if that will be enough to send enough power to that wheel to push us up the hill. If not, then I can lock the front differential and we should be able to go. So there you go, lots of throttle, lots of spinning. It, the rear virtual locker does something, no question. I definitely didn't knock these fences down, right, Alyssa? No. No, those were down <laughs> from someone before. So let me back her down. Okay, so let's get everything set up. We're gonna go heated seat heated steering wheel, climate control fan on one so we can hear everything going on. Front locker still doesn't want to wake up. Let's make sure we're in terrain mode, which should be the most aggressive, you know, sort of rock crawling mode, if you will. We're going to put one pedal driving as optimized for off-road use. So let's do this thing. Traction and stability control off. Suspension again in 
high, we're raising it to increase, give it one second to raise, and then we'll be good to go. You can hear it going. Definitely seemingly a much more robust suspension system than Rivian's. I've been, there we are, very fast, very quiet, up and down, up and down all day. Um, I'm sure there it will overheat at a certain point, but not for now. The thing with the Hummer is it's just so wide uh, that you kind of just point and go. There's also a great camera system on here that if I just take a pause right here, we can see what's going on in front of us. We can also see um, what's underneath the vehicle, sort of like this, or even right there underneath the tires facing front. Now you can see this screen's a little dirty. I can wash the camera that's underneath there and then see exactly what my tires are on. It's really great. It's like having your own spotter in here almost. It's kind of really cool. So big fan of that. Right now we're looking underneath the front tire so I can see I just climbed over that little rock formation there. I'm able to see sort of exactly what's going on with them. And so a little bit of spin class, <laughs> but no problem just walking it up in terrain mode. It's just, you can feel the weight of this thing, but the rear steer really helping getting us around. So, you know, this thing's so huge, it's so big. It's really no problem even for the first bit of the challenge, but this is where it's gonna get pretty freaking gnarly. So what I'm gonna try and do is select extract ride height. So I've selected extract and it says extract mode on, max speed 12 miles an hour. So it's going up. I did not expect it to do that. That's awesome. So this is perfect for these boulders, just really getting maximum ride height, which is what we're looking for. What I'm curious to see is if uh, extract mode will actually take away from our um, articulation. So it says we're in extract, we've reached it. I'm just gonna take a look at our line just over here. So I think we're good, gets pretty sketchy for sure. This is where I really want a front locker, but it will, even if I go completely straight on the wheel, will not put the front locker on. Very weird. So let's start walking it through these boulders. Wow, easy one pedal driving. I can hear the inverters a little bit screaming away. It's so big, it's so beefy. It's really next level from, from Rivian at this kind of stuff, it feels like to me. Just an easy piece of cakes, little tire squeal. Give it some more throttle. That's full throttle. And it's just walking up, walking up, full throttle. Wow. Come on, baby. Full beat, that's to the floor. Come on. That's full throttle, it won't move. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a running start. Full throttle. There we go. <laughs> that's so weird how much it limits power. I wonder if extract mode um, really limits the amount of uh, power you can put through the axles because I've never really experienced it that much. But very interesting. We completed the hill climb challenge obviously easier than any vehicle we ever have. It just walks up. No problem. Needed, a, needed to go full power there. What did that look like to you, Alyssa? That looked like a behemoth going up a mountain. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty incredible, isn't it? I have it in extract mode. Does it look really high? Yeah, it does. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, let's see if it can do the big uh, hump on the way down, shall we? Yeah. All right. Back into drive. Full rear wheel steering makes this thing absolutely so nimble off-road. Very bumpy in extract mode. There's no suspension absorption in this mode. You can see just how bouncy it is. <laughs> but the one thing we actually need here is maximum maximum ground clearance and so um, let's see how it does here what's interesting is i have this suspension travel on and it's been showing that this left rear is a little bit farther down everything else is fully maxed out but i'm just going to walk it down here what i'm actually going to use is probably the underbody camera here let's see what this one is there you go front and rear i'm just going to wash that front camera again Get, gets real dirty real quick and i'm going to put us right over here on the edge so Alyssa, I might need a little bit of spotting from you. Okay. Okay, great. So we do have this one pedal function on, so I'm kind of two footing it because I need a little bit more brake pressure than one pedal drive will do. But wow, we just came all the way down and didn't scrape the bottom. First vehicle, we have enough clearance to not scrape the bottom on. 
and I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> we just had a small scrape there, but really a lot less than others, really utilizing that underbody protection. And now we're gonna be looking at that breakover angle on the rear axle here. So again, utilizing that one pedal mode, just kind of walking it down, tipping into the throttle a little bit. And it's feeling good, we're right on the edge. Gonna just come down right here, nice and slow. There we go, not even a hint of scrape on the rear. That's pretty incredible. This thing has insane clearance, doesn't it? Should we get one? I really think we should get one. I love this thing. This is like a beast off-road. We should get um, the SUV one. The SUV one doesn't charge as fast. Yeah, the rear locker is doing its best, but still no front locker available. You really don't need it. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just position it back in place for a thumbnail and call that a video. Holy smokes. We'll have our final thoughts to you in just a minute. How's it looking? That should be good. And just to finish off some of our fun, what do you say we try and uh, max out the drift angle? So let's think about how to get there. I click this one. And then there we go. I hit a max of 42 degrees. So let's see how this thing goes. It's really fun with the rear diffs lock, traction control off, because you can just turn the wheel, stab the throttle, and you're around. <laughs> it's a freaking rally truck on the brakes, stands on the nose, big steering input, big throttle. <laughs> Just crazy. You can use the weight really to get it around. ABS tuning's great because what you can do is, uh, you know, when you get on the brakes, it actually locks the wheels a little bit. So here we are coming in under braking, big steering input, big throttle, <laughs> big angles. Coming in now under braking, full lock up, turn the wheels, stab the throttle. <laughs> it just freaking digs and rips. <laughs> this thing in a Baja situation would be incredible. So that was pretty good on the drift angle, I hope. We got pretty far there. <laughs> in a maximum of 1.06 Gs. Pretty fun. Thing's a freaking rally truck. And then of course GMC doesn't recommend the use of any of these fun toys on pavement. So we'll go back to, I love the I love that it tows a rocket, first of all, in tow mode. But we'll go back to my mode, which is how I have it set up. And um, yeah, let's go head home. Full beans, roasting tires. Nice, comfortable, stands up on its, on its nose. It's so cool. Love driving the Hummer EV. Thanks so much for watching another out of spec overlanding video. I know I ended it already, but holy smokes. Couldn't have resisted a little bit more of that fun. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.